It's life altering, life drastically, life revolutionizing moments. I feel of great certainty that the Spirit has made me privy of the fact that tonight, tonight, there will be young men and young ladies that will have seminal moments. I believe, I believe tonight that there will be things that happen to you that if God tarries years down the road when you're in the thick of it and there is anointing there and there is authority there and there is understanding there, you will revert or go back in your mind and you will remember this night. Matthew chapter 21. If you're just getting here, you have missed you have missed an encounter. This is this has not been a meeting, so to speak. I believe we have stood in holy places and clean, pure men have poured into us. And you young people ought to leave here eternally grateful that you got to be a part of this maiden voyage of TCYC. God has met with us in such a powerful way. We give honor to the Gilberts, this local church, for opening your facilities up and all of the hard work that goes into having a meeting like this. Thank you for your burden, and I believe God will richly bless you back for opening your doors to us. Thank you so much. My wife, my best friend, the greatest Christian I know is with me tonight with, along with my children. And I give them honor and I appreciate them. And it's a rare thing that we're all together in a meeting, especially for the duration of a meeting. But I felt like it was important that we all be here this week. And um, I'm, thankful that, I'm thankful that I was insistent on that. And... Um, I love my family very much, and thank you for being here. Praise God. Now, I've got some friends here that like to run stopwatches, and they keep time on how long I preach. But you, you can't start it till I let everybody sit down. This first 10 minutes doesn't count, praise God. So, Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 1. Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto thee, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway. Now you got to say it with some feeling and some emphasis. I want you to stay straightway. When you tell them God sent for it, there'll be no questions asked. If Jesus wants it, it's his. Amen. 
And all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of Zion behold the king cometh unto thee meek and setting upon an ass and a colt the foal of an ass and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon and the very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come in to Jerusalem on a donkey, all the city was moved. I'm not interested in just impacting you. I'm not interested in just you being moved. I believe God can do something so powerful in you that it moves your city. I want to preach tonight for a little while from this thought, the way of the donkey, the way of the donkey. Now, if you're carnal or you've got cynicism or you want to snicker tonight, when we pray here in a few moments, I want you to pray all of that out of your spirit because God's got something to say to us. I want to preach about the way of the donkey. Now, before you pray, let me tell you what to pray about up to this point. Up to this point, we have, and thank God for it, we have jettisoned junk. We have molted messes. And we have shed sin and situations. But tonight, with all of that gone, God is going to strap something on us he's going to tie something on us and it may not include everybody in this building but if you're not interested in being used of God I'm asking you just please don't be a distraction because I believe you're the minority in the building but if you're here in this building and you you want, you want God's hand active in your life God's hand on your life Wherever you're standing in this building, would you lift your hands and raise your voices and ask God to help us here for the next few moments. Come on, young man, lift your voice. Come on, young man, lift your voice. Come on, young ladies, lift your voice. That's it. Come on, release that. That's it. Go ahead. Come on, lift your voice. We've got time for this. Lift your voice. Now I'm going to give you 60 seconds to do something. It helps this crowd if I can put something in perspective and give you an illustration. If I were holding the keys to a new car here tonight and I was going to 
toss those keys into the crowd and give somebody a brand new car. You never had to pay a payment. All you had to do is go insure it. There would be a mad scramble across this building. This, there would be mayhem and confusion. It's very possible that there would be trampling. Maybe somebody would have to go to the hospital because you got trampled under somebody who was eager, excited, and expecting. And I'm tonight, I've come to preach to you about something greater than a brand new car. Something greater than a full ride scholarship to college. Something greater than a bank, a bank account full of money. Come on, I'm talking about a calling. I'm talking about a high calling. Now I'm fixing to preach. But for the next 60 seconds, with that as a template in your mind, I want you to open your mouth and I want you to go after it. Come on. You better go after. You better go after what's about to happen. You better go after about what's happening. You better go after what's about to happen. If my neighbor don't want it, I do. If the one behind me doesn't want it, I do. seated on the very edge of your chair I don't anticipate finishing in fact the Holy Ghost kept pressing me about the front end of this I said I really don't want to do that right there we may lose it and not get it back it was like the Lord said who's this about tonight me or your little message so we'll see what happens we got to understand how big a deal this is in Matthew chapter 21. Now, I'll reference this later, but I want to make you aware that this is the fulfillment of a prophecy. Not just any prophecy, a fulfillment of a prophecy, scholars say somewhere between four and 500 years old. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse number 9. There is a prophecy given. Now, in our text in Matthew chapter 1, Mark and Luke also record this with some differences and possibly, or I say differences, some additions that possibly we will extrapolate and draw into this as we move forward, but it's important that you understand four to five hundred years this prophecy lays latent and we see here in Matthew chapter 21 we see it come to pass in total fruition. We see it in living color. In fact, it happens exactly. There may have been a space of four to five hundred years, but this prophecy happens exactly the way that Zechariah prophesies it in chapter number nine. Exactly. Jesus, we see in Matthew 21, also Mark and Luke reference this grand event we see that he tells two of his disciples 
Now, lean in and listen close. He is not indirect with his words. He is not just wetting his finger and sticking it in the air and just kind of feeling after the wind, so to speak. It's with certain specificity that Jesus says to two disciples, go, go. There is no maybe attached. There are no, there are no conditions attached. He does not speak vaguely. He speaks with specificity. Go. And when you go, you are going to come to a place where two ways meet. When you get there, he said, there you will find a donkey tied. And you will find him there also tied with his mother. Mark and Luke we read their rendition of this and Matthew adds this, but we see that Matthew leaves what Mark and Luke records off. Jesus says with certainty, if you are asked why you are to taking the coat, you tell them that the Father hath need of it. That's not spoken with vagueness. That is not spoken in ambiguity. There is no cloudiness about that. He speaks with certainty and with absoluteness. Go. It will be there. Untie it. And when they ask you why you're untying it, you tell them that I need it and they will let it go. I'm headed somewhere. Mark and Luke record that when those two disciples came to the place where two ways meet, which by the way speaks of the decision, there, just like Jesus said, there was tied a coat. They untied the coat just like Jesus said. Hear this preacher. Mark and Luke record that the owner said, why are you taking the coat? And he says or rehearses just what Jesus told him to rehearse. The Father hath need of it. There is no rebuttal. Listen to me. There is no rebuttal by the owner of this donkey. There is no refusal by the owners of this donkey. There is no I've got to have a little time to consider this. There is no cost of calculation. The Bible says that they give the coat to the disciples. I like Matthew's rendition because Matthew does not even record the fact that the owner asks, why are you taking it? Matthew records the fact that when Jesus said, go, you get the coat. You don't even have to ask any questions because they will straightway release the coat. But there's some history behind this. There is some history that I have to explain to you behind this. Ancient history tells us that it was common practice and this is applicable, absolutely applicable to this. Ancient times and practices tell us that before a king would come into a city that he would send he would send servants ahead of him. You better listen to this preacher. God sent you here. God sent me and you here for me to make you privy of some things here tonight. He sends servants ahead. The king is coming. Hallelujah. He's going to need housing. He's going to need transportation. I'm here. I am here to pre-negotiate some things. I am here to check you out. To check your life out to check your house out. To I'm sorry, I don't believe that this was the first time that the owners had heard about the borrowing or the donation 
name of the donkey. I believe the servants had already been there and the deal had already been negotiated. You say, Brother Marks, what does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with us. God has sent a spirit into this meeting. There is a king coming. The fulfillment of prophecy is coming and God is sending... Brother Marks, this is a youth meeting. I understand it's a youth meeting, but I believe I am speaking to those at the ends of the world. Rest upon your shoulders. You better understand, there's angels checking us out tonight. Heaven is looking around tonight. Hallelujah. We need more than just some verbal agreements. We need more than just a young person to wave their hand and say, yeah, I'd like to be used of God. Hallelujah. We need you to get rid of all the cost counting. We need you to get rid of all the calculations that you've been doing. Hallelujah. And you need to make up in your mind tonight if there's a prophetic on its way to my church and my city, he can use me. He can use my mouth. He can use my life. Hallelujah. I look to my right and I see Garland. I look to my right and I see Bogalusa. I look to my right and I see Texarkana. Yes, these are my friends. But men, we got to be aware of the fact we are no longer having church as usual. We live in a post pandemic generation. No, you better wake up. There's a king coming. We got to have things in order. We got to have things in place. We got to be prepared for him. What are you driving at? I'm driving at this. I believe there are some of you in this place who have vocally committed. You have made vocal commitments. But I believe before this service is over tonight that you've got to do more than make another vocal commitment. It's got to be visible. It's got to be something that heaven sees a straight way. You want to use me? Let's do this. You want to... I can't hear you yet. You want to use me? Let's do this. I'm going to put some mighty much nervousness on some parents right now. But what is it really you're dreaming for your children to do? I'm here tonight to contend for the fact that the call of God is still the highest calling. Come on. I'm not against education, but you know what this generation needs? This generation needs a revelation. Come on. Not an education. It needs a revelation. We've got it all backwards. I hit a stump there, but I got my stump grinder with me. This generation says we'll get an education and then we'll get a revelation. That's not how it works. You get a revelation and then you build your education around your revelation. God's looking tonight. Come on. Is his calling, is it more important than your ambitions? God is searching through this house. Are your plans and your talents more important? Are your aspirations? Some of you have felt this. Confirm it. Talk about it later. It builds faith. But for about 12 months now, everywhere I go, I feel like somebody's looking at me. I'm sitting at restaurants and I feel like somebody's look, look up and nobody's there. I'm sitting on a plane, feel like somebody across the aisle is looking at me and turn and there's nobody there. You say, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's the eyes of eternity. And God 
is on the verge of fulfilling every last day prophecy. I'm talking about prophecies. I'm not talking about Zachariah's prophecies. I'm talking about Joel's prophecies. I'm talking about the prophecy of the spirit falling upon all flesh. But it's the beady eyes. It's the beady eyes of, in, of eternity. Come on. Can he stay here? Hallelujah. Can he use our hearts? Can he use our mouths? You know what? I believe there needs to be a sound that goes forth from this meeting that says, everything I've got, it's yours, God. is yours hallelujah it's not the university of houston's it's not some atheist are you hearing me break right now it's not some atheist professor from texas a&m come on you can't have my mind my mind belongs to the master king's business is at hand come on the king's business is at hand When I get there, there's no time for negotiation. Please don't rush me tonight. It's important I drive this home. When what's coming, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I hear the cadence, come on, of the fulfillment of prophecy. I hear the angels drumming it out. Come on, I hear the beat of the fulfillment of every promise that God has given to this last day church. I see it in the distance. But once it gets here, you listen to me, it's too late. You can't negotiate then. Once it's here, you can't say, well, I want it now. No, this is something that has to be pre-negotiated. It has to be determined on a Thursday night in Denison, Texas. Do you want it? I can't hear you. Do you want it? I was made aware of a young man that has traveled hundreds of miles to be in this meeting and he's given up his hockey career. Let me tell that young man without embarrassing him in hopes that I can help somebody else. I have never passed a Friday night. I have never passed the lights of a Friday night and the rattling of drums and the sounds of brass. Come on. And people banging the, the, the bleachers. I have never passed there. Come on and regretted what I'm doing right now and the decisions I've made right then. Let me tell you, this is more important than baseball. This is more important than football. This is more important. This is more important than hockey. You say, oh, it wasn't much. He didn't give up much. It was just an old donkey. Sorry you feel that way. It's obvious you've been westernized. That donkey meant money. That donkey was a colt, which was a male. Come on. That colt represented... That family's future. It represented procreation. It represented, it represented what would pull the plow and bring in the harvest. Boy, I'm preaching right now. Come on, I'm preaching. I'm knocking on your door. I wish you'd open it right now. Oh, it's not much. It's just an old donkey. I'm sorry you've been westernized, but I hope when you leave here tonight, you understand the significance of the donkey. Come on. Come on. In our society, a donkey is somebody that's dumb. In our society, a donkey is the emblem for the Democratic Party. I'm sorry that's all a donkey is to you, but I want to tell you, Jesus uses donkeys to fulfill prophecies. Jesus used donkeys... That donkey 
come on, represented everything that that society was about. Donkeys were a staple of that society. I've come to preach to every insecure young person. I've come to preach, come on, to every image conscious young lady. Come on, that's been spending too much time scrolling through social media. You're worried about your weight. You're worried about your complexion. You're worried about the clothes that you got on. I'm just insecure. I'm just no good. I've come to make a proclamation to you. The Father hath need of you. The Father hath need of you. Come on, can I get prophetic right now? Your dad may have never wanted anything to do with you, but God needs you. Your mom may have never been there, but God needs you. Your family may have forsaken you, but God needs you. If you believe that, shout yes from your toes. Shout yes. Something's coming. For some of you, before the number hits 60 days, some of you, I don't even know what August the 20th, but every time I go to pray today, August the 20th, before August the 20th gets here, come on, you've got to have all of these agreements with God in place. All of the pre-negotiations have to be settled. But when, because when it gets here, you're going to have to make a decision immediately. It's not something, come on, that you can stand there in doubt and unbelief and roll over in your mind. You have to already have it settled. And when it gets here in October, and when the opportunity comes in January, and when it manifests in March of next year, you realize this was it. This was Thursday night. This was what God and I agreed on. I don't have to think about it. Yes. Yes, I'll go to a third world country. Yes, I'll evangelize. Yes, I'll pastor. Yes, I'll be a missionary. Yes, I'll Yes, I'll teach a Sunday school class. Yes. Yeah. There's no time once he gets there for you to waffle for you to flail around in indecision God in his mercy has sent the eyes of eternity to pierce in to this place tonight to help you see if you're ready if you're fit to carry a king Issues. Guess what? I do too. The beauty of this is when the father needs something, a colt that no man had never set on. You never read about that colt bucking him, throwing him. Here's the reason. Because when you say yes, and you yield yourself to, to God and his purpose. The power of a yes. When you say yes, that's when the hand of God can reach inside of you. Listen. Listen. And begin to revolutionize your nature. And some young people never experience the revolutionary, a revolutionary nature change. Because they feel like the change has got to come before they can accept the challenge. It's not change and then a commitment. It's commitment and then the change comes. You don't know my issues. 
But you don't know your neighbor's issues. You don't know my issues. But I'm telling you, the Father has need of you. And if you give yourself to God, you'll put your life in God's hands. Come on. I'm going to tell you what God can do. He can change your nature. He can pull the perversion out of you. He can take your anger. Come on, I need somebody to help me preach this right now. He can take your depression. My God, I am so sick of hearing about the depression in this generation. My God, if you'd wake up to the fact that Jesus wants you and Jesus wants to use you, you would never be depressed again in your life. I don't think you heard me. I'm not afraid to preach it. I hate, an, I hate antidepressants. I hate Xanax. I hate whatever the name is of the antidepressant you're on. Get a calling in your life. Accept the challenge. Be a donkey for Jesus and watch the depression. Jesus fulfills prophecies on donated donkeys. They only stand about 44 to 46 inches. Not very big. In fact, most of them are pretty ugly. Not much to look at. Now, maximum capacity, though, they're able to carry for long distances, upwards of 220 pounds on their back. They can pull twice their body weight. They were staples of society. The way, the way, of the donkey. Why a donkey? Listen closely. Jesus tried his best to address this. Or I say Jesus, God tried his best to deal with this. Donkeys were a symbol of industry, peace, wealth. But on the scene came horses. If we're going to get this done, Brother Stanley, it's going to still be by the way of the donkey. But you see, people, it's, it's the quickness. It's, we can get it done faster, it's smoother. It looks better. Jesus didn't come in on a horse. You know, don't you young people listen to me. You know why there's so much conflict and fighting in Pentecost right now? Because the donkey was a type of humility. The donkey was a behind the scenes beast. The donkey was the burden bearer. But horses were always a type of war. You better hear me if we don't go any further. And this is why there's so much fussing and fighting in your churches and in your youth groups. And we're split ten ways from Sunday. You better listen to me right now. We got this organization and that organization this organization. It's we bought into the philosophy. We'll get us some horses. They look better. Because that's what's, that's, what's that's what's most important, isn't it? That we don't look like the inbreds across the tracks anymore. And we have polished Pentecost to the point we're not pulling anything anymore. Oh, we look good. We look good. But they don't use thoroughbreds to pull weight. We look better than we've ever looked. And that's why there's so much war. It's because we don't want the burden. Because donkeys, young people, this is why the way of the donkey has been rejected. That's, this is why no one wants the call of a donkey. Because a donkey has nothing to do with speed. The donkey symbolizes endurance. 
It's how fast we can get there. It's how fast we can grow a church. I got news for some of you suckers. You're not growing churches, you're growing crowds. I'm not interested in an audience, I want an army. You can't build an army with horses. We gotta go back to the way of the donkey. I don't want to be misunderstood. I don't believe we ought to be stupid and ignorant and unlearned. I believe we ought to be putting our best foot forward. But I'm telling you, I'm concerned when there's more emphasis on education in our movement than there is consecration. I'm concerned when there's more emphasis put on how we look than on prayer. I'm concerned when there's more emphasis put on new structures and new youth facilities. Where's the prayer room? Who's got a prayer room in their church anymore? We got somewhere to get, Brother Gilbert, and we're not going to get there on the back of horses. Where's the donkeys? places in our movement churches that budded and bloomed and exploded in revival in the 70s it was the way of the donkey and you wonder why many of these places have literally dissipated and drained to nothing and in many cases there's no there's not even a symbol there's not even a trace of something that looks apostolic no we don't want to carry the burden anymore we don't want to carry the load anymore. Nobody wants it strapped on anymore. You better listen to what I'm telling you, Lincoln, because a lot of these playboys are in your generation. They're looking for all the shortcuts. Come on, they're willing to step on anybody. They're willing to try to find any rung of the ladder to find that. That's not what you want. That stuff's an inch, it's an inch deep and a mile wide. It's not going to change our cities. It's not going to change people's hearts. Come on, you listen to me right now. Where? are those that are willing to go the way of a donkey, a broken wheel, a head that's down, not in depression, but a head that's down in humility. Do you understand that donkeys are social creatures? They don't get jealous of other donkeys. Donkeys establish connection, intimate connection with other donkeys real quick. You put two male donkeys in a pasture and quick they'll become friends. You put two stud horses in a pasture and they'll kill each other. You don't think I'm preaching truth? It's interesting that God commanded the Israelites. Deuteronomy 17, 16, go read it because you're not going to believe some of you what I'm fixing to say. God commanded the Israelites don't go gather the horses. Don't go to Egypt and get your horses. Stick with the donkey. But it's more fishing and it's more proficient in it. And it looks better. And it's, and it's easier on me. No, in the end, when you take prayerlessness because you're worried about people on your... I've, I've actually heard people say this. Come on, they don't want, they don't want their praise singers getting the, the... I've heard it literally. I've heard it on tape called this deal. They said, we don't want our praise singers having the ugly face. And they think they're saving themselves problems because of the quote-unquote ugliness of prayer when in reality they have more problems than anybody. He said, leave the horses alone. Don't go to Egypt to get horses. And eventually, starting with Solomon, they negated and they threw away both of those commandments. And there goes Solomon. And the way of the donkey died with David. Nobody wants to carry a burden. The behind the scenes beast, the symbols of service and 
humility and suffering. They were burden bearer, bearers. Donkeys carried burdens. They were beasts of burdens. Donkeys were built for, for endurance, not speed. Donkeys were loaded. Nobody wants a burden anymore. And much of the pervasiveness of hell has become because we have switched paradigms to a horse way of thinking instead of the lifestyle of a donkey. I don't know if I ever heard James Kilgore preach when he wasn't weeping. Light, frivolity, light. Now, now the weight, the weight of it, Brother Marks, I'm preaching this generation. I can't do anything about the last generation that offloaded and went for horses. But I'm telling you, the prophetic's coming, and it's not coming on a horse. It's coming. He's looking here tonight to see if there's a young person that says, I'll carry that burden. I'll carry that weight. Come on. It wasn't horses that carried Mary with baby Jesus in her womb. It was a donkey. It wasn't a horse that carried Mary when she fled away from danger. It was a donkey. It wasn't a horse that brought Jesus into Jerusalem. It was a donkey. It's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Every day I wake up and it's heavy, Elder Stanley. It was heavy in your generation. And my prayer is these next couple of generations past you will wake up. Come on. That apostolic, being apostolic was meant to be heavy. It's a responsibility. But I want to tell you, young people, it's worth the wait. W-E-I-G-H-T. It's worth the wait. Carry the load. Go the way of the donkey. Because the blessing is greater than the burden. The blessing, it's worth the wait. I'll be a burden bearer. Can I just stop here and admonish somebody that's discouraged? Say, I wish God would take his burden off me. No, you don't. I got a Holy Ghost admonishment for you. Go home and carry on. Get in your car and make up in your mind. You're not going to talk me out of what God promised us. You're not going to talk me out of what I heard. It's heavy, Brother Houston. It's heavy. My God, there's sleepless nights. Come on, I'm sorry if you don't want me preaching so plain to your young people, but they need to know what they're up against. Young people, there's no dress rehearsal. There's not another generation coming. If you don't get it, come on, it's not going to happen. I pray that the lifestyle of the way of the donkey would be... I'll carry it. I'll be a prayer warrior. I'll live holy. I'll live separated. I'll live righteously. Men... I'll look like a young man. Ladies, I'll look like a young lady. It's worth the wait. W-E-I-G-H. It's worth. The blessing is greater than the burden. The love is greater than the load. It's a haul, Brother Marks. That's horse thinking. The way of the donkey. When you realize what you're transporting. Horse thinking. It's a haul. The way of the donkey. Under the load says, it's holy. You didn't hear what I just said. Horse thinking. I can't 
I can't take this. The way of the donkey says. If we don't do it this way, it's not going to get there. Oh, I know. It's a bad misunderstanding, Pastor Calhoun. Miracle signs and wonders, miracle signs and wonders. Mir- I believe in miracle signs and wonders, but go study glory in your Bible. It's the glory they want. You know what the word glory in the original language is synonymous with? Wait. Glory is weight. Come on. The last thing in the world you want is God to take all this weight and this burden of us. Come on. Holiness is a burden. Holiness is not a burden. Separation from the world is not a burden. It's glory. Young lady, come on. When you stand in the mirror and you're tempted to run the scissors through your hair, your long hair, it's not a burden. It's glory. Donkeys carry messiahs, kings, prophets, and bread. Donkeys brought bread to David when he was about to die. Joseph sent Hashanahaya. The Bible says that the spirit of Jacob was revived, but the spirit of Jacob was revived when he seen the donkeys that Joseph sent, the wagons and the donkeys that were loaded down. Amen. Abraham carried wood for the sacrifice on a donkey. Samson used the the jawbone of a donkey to kill a thousand Philistines. Our trust. (laughs) What? Not in horses. Our trust. It's not. In horses. He said, don't, don't fall. Stick with your donkeys. I know you're going to see the Egyptians doing their thing with their horses. But leave the horses in Egypt. I know that old donkey you got out there. I know that old donkey out there has got one ear that's bigger than the other. I know that old donkey you got out there has got one ear that flops over this way. Come on, you hear this preacher right now. But that old horse out there wouldn't live under the strain. He couldn't handle the weight of it. Listen to me. He wouldn't live seven, eight, nine years. But the lifespan of a donkey is 27 to 40. If we're going to have any longevity, if Pentecost is going to perpetuate into the next generation, it's going to be by the way of the donkey. Lincoln, if Jerry Dean dies, And nobody preaches and weeps anymore. Where's the weepers in our generation? Where's the man that'll walk to a pulpit like this man did this morning? I don't know what he came to preach this morning. But when he stepped into the flow, he realized, gone with that and the weight. We walked in the way of the donkey this morning. That's what prophets come in on. That's what kings and messiahs come in on. That's what bread arrives on. We need bread. Our houses more than ever, Pastor Stanley, have got to be Bethel's. They've got to be houses of bread. But bread's done come in on the back of horses. Horse mentality, horse thinking is I'm going to let somebody else do it. I said horse thinking is I'm going to offload this burden. We're going to get it done. I'm going to let somebody else do it. 
I'm looking for some young people to say, come on, quit saying I'm just 13. I'm just 14. I'm just 15. Come on. You've heard men preach to you this week. Dylan Morgan flat shelled the corn. He's 24 years old. Brother Galloway's 30. Brother Herring's a little bit younger than that. Come on. You don't have time to wait till you're 30 to do something. I believe we're going to see young men bring the house down at 15, 16. But it's only going to happen, Pastor Sharp. By the way of the donkey. You know what I say we do? I say we pack up all of the thoroughbreds and send them back to Egypt. This thing was built on prayer. And prayer is a burden. This thing was built on sacrifice. Sacrifice is a burden. But you just remember, the blessing is always greater than the burden. It's all started and I'm closing. It's just nobody move. It's all started in a Hebrew history class I was in, the professor used a phrase slangly, which he is very much Jewish, but he's very much Hebrew. He is a messianic. He is messianic, but he's very, he's very staunch Jewish. And he used a phrase that I had to go look up which he often does, but he used it. It was English, but he used it very slangly. And the phrase he kept using, he used it three or four times. And he was using it slangly. Ah, you just, you're just the Messiah's donkey. And he kept using that phrase, the Messiah's donkey. Oh, you're just the Messiah. And he wasn't using it with positive connotation. He was using it slangly. You're just the Messiah's donkey. What I didn't realize that it's rhetoric in modern Hebrew when someone uses the phrase the Messiah's donkey. It's speaking of someone who's willing to do the dirty work on the, on the behalf of somebody else. But you young people listen to me. Horse thinking will tell you it's dirty work. But when you know kings and messiahs and prophets come in on donkeys, you'll wake up to the realization that the Messiah's donkey is not doing the dirty work on someone else's behalf. It's doing the destiny work on somebody else's behalf. Brother Marks, it's lonely. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's lonely. Oh, she did a sit on a second matter. I can show you. She did a second matter. I can show. Oh, she sit it a second. She did a sit no. Oh, 
let's let's hold the tongues. Let's wait and let let's let God speak to us. I want you to hear me. Listen. Brother Marks, I'm I'm reticent. Of course this 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 in the end will come down between your pastor and your parents, but I'm 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 a little nervous. I'm reticent, Brother Marks. I I don't I, I, it just kept coming to me to prayer. And I, I don't see how any pastor could be in opposition to this that's serious about revival. But Bishop Sharp, I, I put, feel this. Test the spirit. Feel, if this doesn't feel right, reject it. But I just felt like the spirit impressed me. I wonder what would happen in our churches if, and I know, I know you can't all do it, but in, if, this, in, if in this meeting there were young men and young lady, ladies that said, I'll give myself without distraction for the next 12 months to the local church and put everything on hold. Freeze it all. I'm worried about money and I'm worried about finances and there's, there's, there's fine print and there's, there's stuff signed and there's money that's been spent. I'm sure there were some that the servants found that felt that way about their donkey. But Brother Morgan, when it was all said and done, there's not a house in those villages that didn't wish. There's not a house in those villages when it was all said and done that didn't wish that they'd given their donkey Something's got to happen. You say we need something to happen on a national stage. We need something to happen in our local churches. You say, no, listen. No, there, there's plenty of people just like you. But there's some straightway folks. Well, why did Jesus choose the 12 that he chose, Brother Stanley? Well, I'm just looking for clues. They were businessmen. They owned boats. They owned nets. But the Bible says when he said, hey, come follow me, you know what the Bible says? Immediately. It's the way of the donkey. What about the boats? I don't care. What about the nets? I don't care. What about the family I was fixing to start? I don't care. You want to talk about a double portion? No, let's talk. Let's talk about oxen being slain and plows being broken up and the smoke of sacrifice. Come on. I don't want a mantle just to I'm not interested in a mantle just brushing this building tonight. I want you to make up in your mind. I want to go the way of the donkey. I don't care if I have to go to Gilgal. I don't care if I have to go to Jordan. I don't care if I have to 
You mark my words. It will not be long. You listen to me, son. It won't be 12 months and you'll realize you didn't make sacrifices. You didn't make any sacrifices. Because when God puts on you what he's already started putting on you, you're going to realize you're going to feel something that's much greater than slapping a puck in a net and fans going crazy. Come on, you listen to what I'm telling you. So I don't know. I'm not right. No, here's the scripture I love the most. Come to the keyboards. I'm finished. The Bible says Israel... Go read it. Isaiah 1 and 3. You didn't know it was in your Bible, but you're going to know it now. Israel didn't know up from down. That's what it says. Israel didn't know up from down. But this is what it said. The donkey knows where his master's crib is. <laughs> the donkey knows where he's getting fed. The donkey knows whose hand he's being fed out of. He said, but Israel doesn't know if it's coming or going. Would y'all do me a favor? I'm going to throw you a curve. Just let him sit there. I want y'all to come down. Will you release these musicians and singers? They make great sacrifices. Would y'all come down with us? Just let him sit there. If you're on the edge just fixing to come out and sing, just come down front. Brother Marks, I don't know. There's so many uncertainties. There. No. I've never missed a meal. I'm not afraid to live the faith life. Why, Bishop Sharp? Why are you admonishing these kids to not be afraid to go the way of the donkey? Because a donkey knows. He knows whose hand he's eating out of. And we don't give to get. That's not what we do. We get to give. But the fact of the matter is you can't outgive God. Generation Z, millennials, scrap the horse thinking. If I had to give it a subtitle, it would be scrap the horse thinking. It's worth the wait. Jesus ain't coming in on that. That's a sign of war. And I'm not talking about spiritual war. It's dissension and division and bloodshed. Brother, we, go, we all go the way of the donkey. We're too broken to fight one another. I was your age, they used to sing a song and it was new then, but it's old now. If you can use anything, Lord. Say, I just don't know if I can give that up, Brother Marks. I've said it once, I've closed with it though. When they watched that triumphal entry and they watched Jesus clean the house out and they watched miracles ensue, there's a lot of people that didn't pre negotiate that wish they had it. Did they get their donkey back? My God, when it brings in Messiah and fulfills a 500-year prophecy, it doesn't matter if they got their donkey back. Does God give us our lives back? I don't want that old life back. So I know what these meetings are, and this is why, this is why you don't see my face and name plastered. Some of you come here, you never heard of Cody Marks. You're hearing the reason right, right now, and I'm not intimidated, and it doesn't bother me, and I'm not insecure about it, because typically the MO in these meetings is let's get the burden off. And I understand there's been some necessary things that have been shed in this meeting. But there's some things. We need strapped on us. I want you to leave here not with the weight of the world on you. <laughs> I want you to leave here with the weight of the kingdom. And I want you to leave here going the way of a donkey knowing, come on, I'm taking something home with me. 
I'm bringing something back into my local church. I'm bringing something back into my local city. It's a burden. It's not a burden. It's not a burden. It's a blessing. You want this? Come on, we're working the pre-negotiations out right now. You want this? I need some verbal commitments. You want this? You know where that, you know where the Democratic Party, where they got their little symbol of a, a donkey? A shaker and a mover. A revolutionist by the name of Andrew Jackson. That's where that donkey goes back to. And his opponents started using the donkey with negative connotation. Andrew Jackson said, I'm proud to be a donkey, not in the negative connotation. And he started all of his, all of his publicity and all of everything he was putting out, he started putting that donkey on there because he, he took pride in the fact that donkeys get things done. Donkeys get things done. You want this? You want this? I realize some of you have already committed and you're under the weight of it. You came to this meeting under the weight of it. My admonishment to you is carry on. Well, I'll change. Or I'll go over here and I'll change this or I'll change churches. And let me tell you something. If you're considering to change in churches because the price of consecration is too high where you're at, you're about to make a foolish decision. My pastor expects so much out of us. My youth pet. It's the way of a donkey. And I'm sure somewhere not far from you, they're running thoroughbreds. But messiahs don't come in on thoroughbreds. You want it? I need some, I need some vocalization here. You want it? You believe this end time prophecy that was given to us by the prophet Joel Hill? Do you believe it can come in on you and through you and with you and his spirit upon all flesh? I stand. I'm finished. If you want in this, you better get down here right now. You better get in the Nile because we're fixing to do something. Listen to what I want you to do. It's got to be visible. It's got to be visible. It's got to be more than vocal. It's got to be it's got to be visible. It's got to be visible. And so tonight, I've done this for years all over the country, not specifically this, but this is what we're going to do. First of all, you're going to identify how bad you want this. There's something about the desperation of a voice. Again, I'm going to end where I started. This is a seminal moment. And some of you, if, if you get up in five minutes from where you're going to find yourself, because I don't know, some, where you're fix, some, some of you may end up up here on this. I don't know where you're fixing to go. Something's going to hit this building. You listen to what I'm telling you. It's a seminal moment. It's a seminal moment. But something happens. Something happens when you cry out of here. I don't count to three in, 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 in this meeting. I, I don't want you to go like this. We're not. I, we've done that. We did that in this meeting and needed to do it. But we're going to go like this. Yes. Yes. Now you're going you're gonna to indicate to God and every devil that's fighting you how bad you want this by the volume and the desperation of your voice. I know there's afterburners, there's things that we got to do, but there's nothing more important than what's happening right now. When I get to three, listen to me. I want you to I want you to grab it. And when you grab it, I want you to indicate how bad you want this and how serious you are about going the way of a donkey. I want you to I want you to identify it by the desperation of your voice, the volume of your voice. Come on, some of you come in here heavy. You hear this preacher, the burden, the blessing is much greater. Pastor's wife, the blessing is much greater than the burden. I know you guys have been under it, 
but the blessing is much greater than the burden come on don't let don't let the devil don't let him affect your thinking delusionally come on and cause you to offload no it's going to come by burden that's the only way it's going to get donkeys bear burdens are you ready are you ready one two get ready grab it and shout three grab it Sick and 
and the sick will recover. It comes not by thoroughbred. Our hope is not in horses and in chariots. Our trust is not in horses or chariots. Our trust is in the Word of God. Lead them through. Lead them. Lead them. Be an influencer, Drew Galloway. You be an influencer. We can't do it by thoroughbreds. Where's the donkeys? Where's the donkeys? Don't stop. I'm going to push you. Don't stop. Some of you going somewhere in prayer you've never been. By the way of a donkey. That's how the prophetic comes to pass. By the way of a donkey. Somebody's got to carry a burden. Somebody's got to get up in the middle of the night and pray. Somebody's got to spend time at the church. It's by the way of the donkey. It's by the way of the donkey. How bad do you want it, young men? Some of you hadn't cried out yet. Some of you are still counting the cost. Some of you are still deliberating. Some of you are still reticent. Straight way. Straight way, sir. Straight way. Do we have any straight way people? Do we have any straight way students?
to be lonely and carry a Messiah. I don't want to feel alone. Harrison, I don't want to feel weird. The Bible says Moses was no ordinary child, son. But Moses led three million people out of, the, out, of, out of Egypt. You're no ordinary child. I don't want to be weird. I don't want to stick out. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's the way of the donkey. Chris Calhoun, it's the way of the donkey, son. Quit fighting it. You got to be different. It's the way of the donkey. I don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. I want to fit in with the crowd. There ain't no Messiah going to come in on that. The prophetic's not going to be fulfilled on that. You got to be willing to be different. John the Baptist was different. I said John the Baptist wouldn't worry about what people said about his clothes. John the Baptist wasn't worried about what people were saying about his lifestyle. He had power. He had crowds. He had influence. He made results. Never to be the same. Just your voices. Just your voices. Come on, let's raise the roof on this place. It's going to happen. Because you said yes. My God, folks. It's going to be happen because you said yes. Yes to a burden. Yes to a burden. Yes, to carry a load. Come on, pastor. I know this is a huge meeting, but plug into this. Come on, pastor's wife, carry on. I just wish God would lift this. You don't want God to lift this. He called you to carry a burden. Somebody break the plow and slay the oxen. I don't want you to worry about mom and dad. They need to quit trying to live vicariously through you anyways. Break the plow and slay the oxen. It's so hard. It's not hard. You got a Messiah on your back. It's so laborious. It's not laborious. You've got the weight of prophecy on you. These kids are never going to be the same. You're going to wake up and your taste is going to change. You're going to wake up and see things different. You're going to wake up and want different things. You're going to wake up and your vision's going to be clear. The prophetic, the prophetic, end time revival, the prophetic, end time revival. It's the way of the donkey, folks. Miracle signs and wonders. It's the way of the donkey, folks. You better not stop. Go. I'm tired. Go anyways.
My voice is hurting. Do it anyways. Push. We're giving birth to something here tonight. Push. Push. Pastor Gilbert, come here and pray. Keep going. I want you to hear what the sound. I'm going to let you hear the sound of the way of the donkey. This man's been walking the way of a donkey. I want you to hear what it sounds like. I want you to hear the authority and the brokenness. Come on, keep praying. Pray. 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 I'll bear the weight. I'll bear the weight. No matter the pain. I'll bear the weight. I'll bear the weight. I welcome the weight. Oh God, I welcome the weight. It may be slow. It may hurt. Oh God. But I'll bear the weight that the city will be moved. Oh, it won't be glamorous. You know what that is? That's the sound of the way of the donkey. You hear what he was praying? I'll bear the weight. For the sake of the city, I'll bear the weight. I want to know, are there any other leaders that could throw your head in the air and cry that out? Darren Gilbert, it's going to be worth the weight. W-A-I-T, but most of all, W-E-I-G-H-T, it's going to be worth the weight. study enough to make this happen it comes through the brokenness of bearing the weight you can't get enough education to make this happen it comes from the brokenness of the way of the donkey you go ahead and go to urshan school of theology Come on, but you're not going to get this in Urshan. This comes from the burden, the brokenness. Come on, this is the weight of a burden. People look at Brother Sharp. Oh, he's he's different. He's weird. No, Brother Sharp's here because God sent us a bishop who walks in the way of the donkey. God sent us an example, an elder. I'm thankful you're different, elder. I'm thankful you're different. We don't need showboats. This is not a horse show. This is not a thoroughbred race. It's to he that endureth unto the end. I'm looking for the second milers right now. for the second milers right now. I'm looking for the second milers right now. Come on, who's got a little more push in them? 
Who's got a little more pull in them? Who's got a little more weeping in them? Texas and you go home the way of the donkey may you go back to school the way of the donkey may you walk your college campus by the way of the donkey It's too much, Brother Marks. It's not too much. The time's getting away from us. Come on, you're blind. Time's already gotten away from us. We're not wasting time. We're trying to redeem time. My God, that's Holy Ghost right there. We're not wasting time. We're trying to take time back. 